Your lights are supposed to, no, it doesn't matter. Good afternoon. Welcome to Atomic Mass Transmissions Live. My name is Dallas Kemp, and with me today is William Schick. What happened here? Like I was being professional. Was, we oh, always get in trouble. We always get in trouble for not being professional. professional. Did that? That was that, very. It was very Cronkitean of you. Does that not I come? It. No, I liked it. Right? I liked it. It came out just fine. It came out just. Fine. This is a professional painting show where we do miniature painting for Atomic Mass Games and the Marvel Crisis Protocol miniature combat. Game. I feel like you're about to show me like miniatures in their wild habitat, and I'm gonna learn something really soon. Right just be like. But like the Captain Marvel miniature has natural predators. There's no natural predator. There might Captain be. Marvel. No, there definitely is. No. Minerva. Well, there's that. See? Boom. Done. Joining us today. <laughs> <laughs> what is even what is even going on? So what are we doing today? Uh, besides funny voices. You are going to paint Captain Marvel. I do have a Captain Marvel. You brought I'm that paint. one back around. We did. No, it's there. So last week I did. A, I'll switch it out here. You did an alternate. I did Iron an Man. alternate Iron Man. I did a Hydra Iron Man per the stream's kind of request. Yep. And I've worked on him a bit more since then. You did. How's that look, Josh? Ooh, look at that. It's a little zoomed out. It's a little zoomed out. A little zoomed out. Hit the remote zoom button. There's no remote zoom button, but I can zoom it in. There. How's that, Josh? Is that better? So yeah. So I did a. I did an alternate a reporter scheme. Reporter in the field shows us that Iron Man is. Here. An alternate scheme, uh, Hydra-inspired Iron Man, and I finished him up over the week since then. So this is basically what I'm calling done. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun, and it was interesting. And one of the things that it kind of inspired me on was the green was so much fun to kind of mess around with that I was like, I could do a Kree Star Force Captain Marvel. So I think I'm going to try to do a Kree Star Force Captain Marvel today. Yeah, that'd be cool. But yeah, so there's there's evil Hydra Iron Man for all of your cabal goodness. So, um, this if you want to, oh, hail Hydra, hail Hydra. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you should never do I that. I can't even get a chuckle. Out never... of it. Like I thought, Josh was going. No, 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 no. 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 You had to whisper it. it if you really wanted to. That, get... No, I think I think I think a newsman um, would just say it. So yeah, so there we go. So I've I've completed that one. I'm going to move on, and I'm going to do an alternate costume Captain Marvel today and uh yeah but i think the real story is what you're doing today because you're going to teach us all how to paint windshields we're going to paint a windshield which was popular request on the social medias recently and i'm going to do it in a manner in which i've never done it oh lights camera oh. action lights camera action paint josh the you gonna you gonna fix my camera for time because i can't paint with games. it like in my face no, if you know so, that. So, yeah, I'm going to do a windshield. And so, typically, um, I have, and the studio ones were done um, with a very dark windshield. What? This, is, this is it. This, okay. is, this would be it. Dark windshield, dark yeah. Windshield. Very, very dark uh, with some really nice, uh, rich blues moving up to a light blue to some highlights. I'm going to go a different way. I'm going to go a much lighter colored windshield. I'm going to use a lot of glazes. And just kind of wishy-washy, kind of get a little artistic-y. I have no idea what colors I'm going to use. I just got some blues and grays and whites and yellows. And so, like, all the colors of the rainbow, basically. Well, except for, you know, green and orange. You got and greens. And, you have, like, all the greens in front of you, the, actually. Well, they literally all the greens are in front of me, but I'm not using them. Because, like, I kind of need <gasps> you the You know greens. what? I am going to use a green. I'm going to put a little bit of green in there. I want to grab the green. Let's try this. Experiments. I want to take this. Ooh, that is... Green wash. I'm going to add that to my... That is real interesting. So I got a couple of colors. I'm just going to have fun. So I've... Uh, I did use my airbrush. You don't have to use your airbrush. Um, but I just threw on um, some... Uh, this is actually a super light gray. It's not actually white. On all the windows, you can see my overspray. Don't care because I will tape these off when it's done and actually paint the car. So I'm just going to use some glazes. I'm going to start with a blue. Because I'm so, going to put some uh, blue, like the sky, reflecting into the glass. I know you really love tape. I do. But one of the things that I found that works even better than tape, and I super love, which somebody somewhere turned me on to, was Silly Putty. You can mask silly with putty, Silly Putty like yeah. so easy, and it never takes the paint off, and you just roll it up after it has paint on it, and the paint comes right off because yep. it doesn't adhere. It's awesome. You can use the same gross ball of Silly Putty for, well, I'm on two years now. so It does work really super good um it's i've seen it i've used it once a long time ago but i'm lazy and i usually just grab tape and just 
Which is funny you say you're lazy because like tape takes more effort because you got to cut it to you got to cut it to spec and like all this crazy. I love how everyone has their own like little thing. Yeah, you know, so, like this is how I do it. Leave me alone. Cool. Tape works great. No, I'll do just silly, silly putty, putty yeah. works too. I was, you know what? Some bubble gum. Let's get some bubble gum. Bubble gum. Don't use bubble gum. <laughs> That's that won't work like you want it to. I don't have a reference image in front of me, Josh. I'm gonna need a. I'm gonna need a, another comic eye here. Does that, does that look Cree Star Force Green right there? Come over here and check. Look at my thumb. Do it, Josh. Do it. Look at my thumb. Oh yeah. Yeah. You think that's it? What do you think? I think that's it's it. Pretty good. It's pretty good. All right. Well, we'll we'll roll with that then. So let's mix up a bunch of this. Make it go. So what are you doing for this windshield? Like, what's the approach here? Because uh, right. I don't think I've ever painted a windshield sans airbrush. Josh, throw that over here. Oh, you're on there. Oh. So I've used a uh, blue wash and a little tiny, tiny dot of this uh, uh, magic blue to kind of liven it up. I'm going to start right here. I'm going to take a brush and I'm going to put it right at the bottom of the window. And I'm going to take a damp brush and I'm just going to soften that edge just a little bit. I don't care how perfect this is. I actually kind of want it to be imperfect because like if you look at like illustrations of cars or even if you're just walking around outside, um, I like looking at cars, which makes me look, look suspicious. <laughs> as long as you're not looking at people in their cars, no, it's no, probably no. less bad. I'm not looking at people in their car and I'm not looking at like to, uh, you know, Jimmy the Lock and take the radio or anything. I just, I like looking at cars. It's the way the light reflects on them and the way the light changes the color. So if you look at a yellow car, it's really interesting. Like you can see the greens and the ochres and the browns and the blues in, in, in the yellow cars. Uh, so anyways, philosophically, we're done there. No one wants to hear about that. That's it? Car philosophy 101? No one wants to hear that stuff. Complete. Me just, I'll just ramble on for days about the color of cars. For um, days. So anyways, I just want to put some blue into the windshield. I don't care how perfect this is. Like I said, I'm just using a damp brush and I'm just trying to get some tint and it can be messy it can be kind of funny shaped because the light's going to be reflecting in all sorts of different manners and just kind of bouncing all over the place so it's okay like this little line i love this little weird line right there it could just be like horizon or whatever and i'm just going to go really fast i should probably put putting blue higher up i started a little low so do we have a question? Josh is staring at the computer like I thought we had a question. A question. You, you like leaned in like and yeah. There's mm -hmm. no questions? Nobody no, no, nobody has a question. There's a whole chat going on and you're telling me not a single one of them. It's all, all the questions are about a certain something thing on the table. There's nothing on the table that's, but that's paints. Right. That's, that's what I'm telling we're you. Not, we're, not, we're not ready to get there yet. Ignore the table. Ignore, <laughs> ignore the man behind ignore the curtain. The the man in the table. I don't think you can ignore a man That's, in a table. Yeah, that'd be awkward. I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna go back to Dallas's philosophically. You cannot ignore a man in the table. I'm gonna go ahead and say I agree. So this, I actually did the uh, the uh, street lamps for the studio in sort of the same manner, and they turned out pretty good, and I really liked them. So I thought, why not try it on a car? So we're gonna see how it goes. I've, I've never done this way. I've always done the, the black and the dark blues to make windows and stuff. Boop. Ask painting questions, folks. <laughs> I mean, if they get really clever, they'll be like, how did you paint the thing on the table? This is a, this is a painting show. We will turn this car around. Will we? I'm painting a car. See what I did there? That's true. It was very clever. You're also a dad, so you know. I, mean, I, I, more I have clever. dad's face. I can give you dad eyes. Dad eyes. I'm going to let that dry a bit. Uh, we got a couple of glazes. So we're just going to let that dry a bit. We should kick it over to. Schick doesn't have anything yet. So I. Here's am, our field reporter. Here we go. William Schick. So yeah, that's why I never went into into news. I'd have to change my name. It just sounds too dangerous. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I mixed up a kind of an aqua 
an aqua green color, I guess, um, to kind of mimic that, that Cree star force, that classic blue green. Now it looks like you're painting kind of like I do, very, very thin over yeah. top of the and uh, since Yeah, Zenithal. since you were nice enough to Xenophil highlight this for me with the airbrush right before we started, um, I basically thinned it out using glaze medium and water, and I'm just kind of letting the thinned out paint show so that you can see like over here on her hip, right? You got a lot of white because as you're spraying, the white comes down, it covers that area. The black stays in the folds from the two different colors of primer, and so we get like this nice little raised highlight area on the hip. And I didn't have to do anything to it. I just had to keep my paints thin and kind of go quick. And then if I want to darken the colors, I can always go back over them. And the big thing is just making sure that you always keep your brush kind of clean and wet because the paint will dry on the brush. True. And when your paint's thin, when it dries, it dries back to normal paint consistency. I know, shocking. Shocking. We do have a painting question for Dallas. Someone's asking how to get that sweet yellow on the taxi on the uh, studio core set. Oh, I didn't paint that. I did. And unfortunately, I, I have to, it's an airbrush. <laughs> so if you have an airbrush, yellows are really easy to do. So are, whites are a lot easier with an airbrush too. Um, but what I use is I just used, um, I used a Minotaur airbrush paint called uh, Warning Yellow, Hazard Yellow, some kind of cautionary yellow, which is kind of on an orange scale. Then I grabbed some Vallejo um, Model Air Yellow, and I basically mixed it up with that um, to get brighter gradations, and I just used the airbrush to build up, um, to build up those different... Uh, highlights and stuff and it and it's actually pretty fun I've got a couple I've actually got Josh wants to go get it I have another car that I'm working on using the same technique it's um, on well, my desk actually hang on a second kick it over here real quick I'm, I'm actually painting yellow on this traffic light um, and real quick what I'm doing here before you jump up and go grab that car is this is over a white primer and I'm using this Vallejo Model Air, this is a yellow, and I am glazing this to create a very bright yellow. Now this is actually too yellow. Um, I don't want it to look like this, but I need this bright undercoat. This is an undercoat or an underpainting to get that bright yellow. And now what I'll do is after this dries, I'll use like a red brown like a very warm brown and I will wash this again and that will tone it down and get in the crevices and give me a more natural yellow. Now you can paint a car just the same way. You can prime it white and you can use like a, the Vallejo Model Air. You can just wash the whole thing and then you can uh, shade it with a very warm brown. I like warm browns. You can use a cool brown. Um, we can get into that discussion if we want. Um, um, but the big secret about yellow is for me, it's, it's yellow, black, and white are always, and red sometimes, are colors that people quote as like the tricky colors. And we will be going over these. I will be showing you how to paint yellow. Um, the big thing for me with yellow is to not start, this is not your base color. This is your, this is your highlight, something this bright. For your base color, you actually want something more in the ochre range. So you want to tone it down a little bit and you want to and then you want to shade you can shade with browns you can shade with a warm brown or a cool brown and then highlight up to that bright yellow and that will give you that nice yellow so you can do washes you can do edge highlights whatever same way with white is to not start with don't use pure white as your base coat you actually want to use something off as your base coat and you shade that and you just you just you just highlight with your with your pure white because pure white just, you don't see pure white in the world. Even if you looked at like, a, I have a porcelain uh, little palette here. If you were to like look at these colors, um, the primary color you see is not pure white. It's actually a very blue, off white. It's all the reflections and all the, and the lack of depth and lack of shadows that makes it really, really white to you, so. That's, that's like this little sequence. And we will be painting these. 
Secret secrets. We can only paint so many things in a day unless we just turn the camera on. Nobody's here to see us paint anyway. I'm going to paint all day. They only want to see what's on the table. I know. They don't want to see us paint. Dallas controls that, though, so you're going to have to bribe him on me. You have it. I News don't. News to me. I've been given control. <laughs> Drunk on power. What's going on there, Josh? We're just, uh, we're just looking at your sweet greens and blues. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So for those, I'm kind of going off of memory here because normally I would have my phone and it would have all kinds of reference images on it um, to try to like kind of match the colors. Reference but, super important in painting. But, um, you know, we're just having fun. We're just, we're going to Bob Ross it a little bit and we're going to, we're going to make happy little accidents and something will come out cool. So that's, that's how it'll work. So I think this blue is probably a little too turquoisey. No, I'll be fine. But I can I can dull that down by using a wash, and we'll make it nice and nice and dark. And I'm going to do probably the same thing on the green because the green is very minty right now. So I'll use some thin glaze. Minty layers. fresh. She's very minty fresh right now. Very minty fresh. Minty fresh. More at eleven. So did you finish your car already? Or are you like done? No. Is is it over? Is it over? No. Why not? Because it's all glazy, so it's all being all wet painted. Wet painted. Wet blend. I could wet blend it actually. It's not a bad way to do it. So what's the difference between? the two brush blend you were doing before and a wet blend. Well, I'm not really two brushing. Using two brushes is not two brushing. Are you more feathering at this point? Yeah, I'm just feathering and just kind of letting letting paint get softer on the edges. Like actual two brush blending consists of like, you, you want to like actually pull paint very gently to create a gradient. Um, whereas like this, I'm not really worried about the pure gradient. It can be kind of a mess, so I don't really call it, consider it two brushing, because mm -hmm. it's just kind of a wreck. <laughs> it's just a disaster, but it's gonna be a good disaster. Oh yeah! We're gonna pull it together. We're gonna pull it together. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn this on. Ooh yes. Josh. What's going on over there, my man? I don't, I don't, I don't really have a ton to, to talk about right now. Like I'm just going through and doing my base coats. So this is where the show gets its name, Watching Paint Dry from. That's, that's not the name of the show. Literally all we're doing right now. Oh, do we have a name? Man, I got a lot of old paint schemes. Uh, actually talked about doing an alternate Spider-Man paint scheme based on the um, Secret Wars outfit that Spider-Man wore, which is like this kind of blue-black. It's, it's not the symbiote, just different Secret Wars. Um, but it was like this blue-black, and it had, if I remember correctly, I think it had like some reddish, red like spider webbing and stuff. It was pretty cool. Um, so that one could be fun and definitely would work with the current existing um, sculpt. I think doing spider, Spider-Man's like spider armor would be really cool and just doing a silver Spider-Man. I actually have the comic of that when it first came out and they hollow it like they, it was like one of those puffy three-dimensional covers with like yeah, it's foil, and boss, foil right? on it. <laughs> it was, it's something else. Such a terrible thing for an acrobatic Spider-Man to choose, though. Like, why would you do that to yourself? I'm going to wear heavy armor that stops me from being able to jump around. No, Spider-Man, no. You're missing the point of your power set. But yeah, I think that would be really fun. Um, part of me kind of wants to just paint a really bubblegum pink crossbones for the lulls. I mean... I was challenged to do Metallic Pink Hulk. Metallic Pink Hulk, yeah, that'd be pretty fun. I, I have plans for that too. Yeah, definitely. We've, we've talked about like some of the ideas there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, internally. you're gonna like, like give him an arc reactor and stuff. Just yeah, to... I think giving him an arc reactor would be awesome. 
They're pretty sweet. All right, I've taken and mixed some dark gray, and I'm gonna put just a little darker shadows into my windows. I just kind of like the idea that like you do the crossbones who gets interrupted during his like little girl's tea party because you know no matter how big and bad you are when your little girl wants to have a tea party and she's like you got to wear the outfit you wear the outfit it's zero true. question sounds like red skull calls up he's like look we're robbing a bank you got to come now and he's like seriously he just shows up his pink uh, little tutu i'm a little busy yeah zero question he's like well, they're like too bad and he's like well okay but Princess Moon Unicorn is going to be so disappointed. Beautiful. See, these are the stories that you have to give your little paint jobs. You got to come up with a reason for them. Someone suggested painting an alternate cab to look like U.S. agent. Josh, no one said that. You just I, said that. I you, swear, I'm looking just, at it right now. You just made this I'm up. I'm looking at it right now. I don't now. buy it because I can't, I can't double check. I, I, we'll look at it later. There's, there's mm -hmm. tape. Yeah, one of the things that I, I would really like to try and I think would work is doing a conversion where you take like Iron Man's torso and the Captain America and putting them together to create the uh, Supreme Commander Captain America from uh, Secret Empire at the end where he fights, where bad Steve Rogers fights good Steve Rogers. He comes out all like armored up and stuff. I think that'd be really cool. And I'm pretty sure that would work real well, but... I gotta, I gotta get that stuff first. All right. I don't know if you're super star force you Carol, but you do look fabulous. We do have a question from chat. We have an answer. When painting uh, Cap America, Captain America, um, Spider-Man, or Captain Marvel, um, the, were the, blues, uh, the, the base blue colors used across all three models, are they the same, um, or are they highlighted to different levels? Um. Well, I think it depends on whose versions you're talking about. The studio ones were probably all the exact same. Uh, those were painted by Brennan. Um, so they, they, I, if, if I'm trying to go back in my head and remember. I think they all are painted the same. Mine were painted differently. Check where you're painted. Where you're painted the same or differently? Do you do you remember? Mine. So, uh, my Captain Marvel, and my Captain America were painted with the same base blue and then highlighted differently, because um, Captain Marvel I kept darker, and um, Captain America I went a lot brighter. I went more on the baby blue side yeah. than yeah. the the dark blue side. And then my Spider Man, I believe I used an entirely different blue. But part of that reason was because I used an airbrush to do the base coating on Captain America and Captain Marvel, and I did not use an airbrush on Spider-Man. Got it. So. My Captain America and Captain Marvel are the same blues. I think, uh, yeah, it's the exact same recipe. My Spider-Man, um, I'm going with something a little darker as well. So it turned out good. I liked it. So a lot of experimenting and just having fun and just trying new things. The studio ones, I, I, I guarantee you they're... they're like I said, they're painted by uh, Brendan, and I would bet they're all the same recipe. They look the same. So I've added my gray shadows, and what do you think so far? What do you think of that, Shik? Looks like a windshield. Looks like a windshield. Looks like a windshield. I like it. You, I is like it, it too much white up here? I don't think it is. Uh, Maybe a little some, bit. Maybe a little bit. Probably not much. I'm going to bring some more blue into that real quickly. I think, I think it's Are they frustrated fun. with us, Josh? No, no, they're actually uh, enjoying what they're seeing. They can't see anything from me right now because I'm like painting this little sash, but there's nothing exciting about the sash, I promise you. I totally enjoyed painting the sash. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm, like, I'm just saying, like, nothing's happening. I'm just base color oh, right, right now. Like, there's right. nothing to see. There's nothing to see here. So they can just they can look at fabulous Captain Marvel and her. In her Kree Star Force best. Like if I was going into battle, the first request I would have when I'm building my super suit is I'm going to look fabulous and awesome. I mean, you know, you don't you don't choose the color of your army uniform. You just wear it. The Kree decided that mint green and turquoise was the way to go. So. 
It's what we got. It's what we got. All right. All right, I'm gonna let that dry. I'm gonna find something else. Yes, Josh? What? <laughs> It's that, that they've been pretty patient. Oh, Josh is. Are we rewarding people like, and their patience? They've been pretty patient. Some things are drying, so maybe we is Josh, take a little bit of a break. And is Josh coming in? Is he coming in to be the hero? We show them some mercy. We're taking a break. We'll be back after these messages. Dun, dun, dun. All right, so uh, how long do we got? Like, ten most, most commercial ten breaks minutes. are not 10 minutes long. 10 minute break. 10 minute break. It's insane. What is wrong with you? I'm going to go get a taco. A taco? Why not? Tacos. Oh, Josh didn't cut us off. He didn't. No. There's no, there's no break. I made this whole thing up in my head. It's all a lie. All right. So we did show this off today, and we're going to show it off again, because why not? Because it's awesome. So mm. Yeah. So those of you who watched the Asthma Day live stream. This morning at 5... Was it five? No, no six thirty. Six thirty. Six thirty. Six thirty Pacific. Pacific Standard Time. Yeah. Um, Steve Horvath was live on the Asthma Day uh, Twitch from um, was it Essen? Yep. And did a playthrough of Marvel Crisis Protocol, or you know, like a little demo, and explained some of the stuff and um, spoiled this. Totally spoiled. Which camera are we putting this on? This camera? My camera? Not that one. Not my camera. It's going to be awkward. Oh, oh. There you go. Oh, and Josh changed the camera. No, no. It's just a preview. Is that Thanos' triumphant entrance music? I can't tell when we're on the camera because two cameras are happening. At the same time. No, you're good. You're kind of there. You're so almost you're there. there. You're going the wrong way. This comedy of errors here. We should have rehearsed. I mean, I Josh, I told you we needed I to rehearse this. I, I can move to the camera. No, Josh has got this. I got this. I got this. All right. This is just something he has to do. I can move the light around. Hold on back. Look at him. In all his magnificent glory. Maniacal, magnificently maniacal. He is magnificently. Ma Wait, do you have the maniacal face on, or do you have the angry face on? He's got the maniacal face He's on. He's got the uh, the so. maniacal face on. So of course, Thanos, the Mad Titan, is is here. He is in Marvel Crisis Crisis Protocol. Um, he's here to wreck face and to collect the Infinity Stones. And, um, of course, our miniature has uh, two hand options. So he has a, a gauntlet with all the infinity gems collected. Um, I mean, technically, if you didn't paint all the gems, you, you, you could choose how many gems he has. You could. You could just be like, well, You could be like, he's got three. three. Oh, My favorite three. Thanos is the three gem Thanos. I don't know. Like, you know, you can make that choice. It's a yeah, hobby game. You got options. Game. You do what you want. And then he's also got another uh, hand option that matches this one. So he's just gauntleted with the with a regular glove. He's got two head options: the maniacal grin that is so um, just ubiquitous with the character. It is super classic. Like we talked about when we were concepting and coming up with ideas for him. I think you said it. You're like he's just always so pleased with himself. He's like, so that's true. With himself. He is. He's just, he is consistently so pleased with himself. Pleased. Uh, and then we have the grumpy. Yeah, we have the not face. so like he was pleased with himself, but these kids won't get off his lawn face. Yeah. So the uh, take matters into his own hands. Yes, yes. Kind that's of face. that's the face you really don't want to see on on Thanos because it means that you know things just got real. Things got real, and you probably going to die. <laughs> so we got two heads. We got two hands. Um, he comes with the throne. Um, so we got this awesome throne. Um, and everybody in the studio will tell you how much I love this thing. <laughs> it's a ridiculous amount of love I have for this. Well, I mean, chair. you, you kind of concepted it yourself, so it is a labor of, of true love. It's just not that. It's just like this thing is just, it's, it's just wicked. 
This it is, is very this cool. This is just wicked. This is just wicked. Yeah, I mean, we talked originally. We talked about just doing Thanos as Thanos, and you know, we, like that would be amazing. And we'll give them some options for Gauntlet, no Gauntlet, that kind of stuff. But I think really, when you have a character that's so important, so universally I, yeah. like iconic to the world and the universe and the stories that we want to tell, right? So, and the cool thing is also he uh, he's, he comes with a he comes with his own base. Can I say the base size? Yeah. So he's a 50 mil base. He's a big, big boy. Um, so it plugs into the throne. Um, you will also be supplied with another base. It's it's a match of this. It's not it's not unique. It's the exact same base design that you can put into the the slot yep. to have him meandering around the tabletop and have your throne still looking primo and excellent. And this is a hard plastic kit coming out. Um, next year. Next year, we'll say next year. Next right? year, yeah. We can say next year. We say next uh, year. Can I show him, I'm gonna show him next to. Show him next to what? Captain Amer I got Captain America over here. Do you? Yeah. Oh, you do. Look at that. Oh. Look at that. I'm gonna put him next to Captain America. Like, put him on the table next to Captain America prize and help anything. I can't tell if I'm in the screen or not because the la there we go. But yeah, we really wanted to take the opportunity to make a really sweet looking throne, but also click it onto me to kind of showcase it's the not, fact that you know oh, I can't tell. Sorry. Hobby games, hobby games are more than just playing games on the tabletop. Like there's there's an artistry to it. There's a, there's kind of like this you're creating your own sweet shelf piece that you can put in the game that you can just enjoy when you're not playing the game, all that stuff. So yeah, it was a really fun, it was a fun way to kind of dive even deeper into the lore and the look of the world through the game. Like, I, I mean, I really feel like this is something like not only can you, if you want to, if you want to play the game, like you're saying, right? You can play the game and you can, you can just have it as that, but it's just also, it's, it just makes a sweet collector piece. Um, stuff that me and you like, the, you know, these, you know, you know, collector -y things that just look cool on your shelf that you can just paint up and like, you know, you don't necessarily have to play it. I, I personally would love to have one of these like painted to a real high level and just display it on my shelf or something like that. That'd be really awesome. And then my own that I would paint and play in the game because trust me, I'm, <laughs> I'm totally going to play this. Oh yeah. In well, and it was important to make the make sure that the throne was usable in the actual gameplay as well. So like, it has it has a size that'll be printed on it. it does have a size? All that stuff. So, yeah, it's just it was a way to kind of unify so many cool things that are just fun, and then to give people a chance to create their own awesome Thanos. He's super fun. I, <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. He is super fun. <laughs> um, In a murderous sort of way. Oh. But yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to spoil anything. I'll be the bad guy. You'll be the bad guy? All right. I like this. I like not being the bad guy for once. <laughs> not, having to, not having to put the foot down and be like, no. <laughs> um, that's not warm enough. But yeah, so that's that's been one where, I mean, we've been chomping at the bit to show that stuff off. Marco, our... Internal sculptor and engineer did an amazing job on him. Yep. Luke Sheridan did the throne. Luke Sheridan did the throne, did an awesome job. So. I really love how it turned out. Um, and Brendan painted it up. Just knocked it out of the park. Knocked it job. out of the park, like, out for of real. The park. I remember I looking the at the pictures of it, and I was just like, holy crap. What? Yeah, because like, what wait, is can, can we go back to it again? Can we go back to it? Hang on, I'm going to show somebody. I'm going to show I'm going to show Like, if you look at the pictures, um, especially the solicitation pictures that uh, have not gone up, we've just, um, you'll see that there is a, uh, hang on, my light went dark. You can see the, the green gem. It's, it's too dark and too close. But you'll be able to see it, and it looks like a lens flare, and um, yeah, that was painted, and it's just awesome. And, and it just makes me go, well, I gotta do better when I paint mine. Thanks, Brendan. Thanks. 
You don't sound very thin. I hope he's watching. I hope, I hope he's watching right now <laughs> so we can know how disappointed I am in his greatness. It's just, it, it felt like a challenge. It was. He was throwing the gauntlet. I mean, at one point he was the student. Now he's the master. He is. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I made a dark brown but warm wash, and I'm washing my street lamp. So uh, what that means is I put a little red into an umber wash for anybody playing the Playing the game at version. home? Playing the home game? Playing the home version? Another question from chat. Um, I hope we have more than one. These stands we're uh, mounting, mounting our miniatures to paint on. Do, we, do you guys normally paint with those when you're not on stream? Nope. I do not. So, um... I've done, um, what I find uh, when you're streaming is um, the, my least favorite thing to hear is somebody tell me I'm off, off the screen. So the biggest thing is this gimbal. Uh, a, keeps, keeps me on the, the frame um, so you guys can always see what we're doing. Um, I just paint at home or at work if I'm painting. Um, it's all about it's all about keeping your back straight and your shoulders or your shoulders straight, uh, elbows on the table, and have a nice uh, nice posture when you're painting. This just keeps us on the frame, so Josh isn't constantly yelling you're off the frame. We're giving us the hand signal. The yeah. The what are you up, doing? What are you doing? What, what are you, you doing? What is happening right what now? What are you doing? Why do I have to work with amateurs? What are you What are you doing? It's just who we are, Josh. We're amateurs, man. I want to use a little yellow. Why do you have to be so harsh? Oh, that's fair. Eh. Is it though? A little yellow. Just a touch. All right. What? What? What else? What else is going on, Josh? So that's our Thanos, and I hope you like it because we love it. And it's awesome. We've been we've been waiting a long time to show that boy to the world, and we're very excited. We are super excited. We should tell people that like uh, the the you got multiple play options too. That's true. So not only can you play him in your regular game, um, you can take him as part of your roster um, and play him in a regular crisis mission, uh, but also. Uh, what's the official uh, titles of these? We don't have an official title yet. So the raid boss, he's a raid boss. What, so we're, what we've currently kind of been talking about since Gen Con is the, the loose idea of raids. So this is the multiplayer format where two people take control of like a, a normal-ish um, team of characters from Marvel Crisis Protocol. Our intrepid heroes. Our intrepid heroes, and then they go out and they have to fight another player controlling a big, super bad boss of some type, some major cosmic level uber threat that only two crisis teams could possibly ever hope to overcome. And of course, Thanos was, zero question, a perfect fit for that. So. Just the, I mean, yeah, that's, I mean. Um, yeah, so you'll be able to play the raid version of Thanos where he's just, you know, everything you'd expect from cosmic level threat Thanos. Yeah, he, I mean, he is, yeah, he is, he is super cosmic level threat. Yeah. Because there's variations of that even, right? Yep. And, uh, yeah, so that was that was kind of like one of the big things. And it was something that we baked in from the start, like we've talked about before. We always knew when making the game that we wanted to have these multiple different play options. And, of course, you know, you look at the great history of Marvel and all the stories and stuff, and that, that coming together of multiple different groups of heroes and sometimes villains and everything in between to face down something that's basically unstoppable and, you know, often overcoming it. Although I make no guarantees when you actually play the game because we're not beholden to having to continue issues or anything like that. Um, that that was just like a thing that had to be in there. So we worked very closely and very hard at the start on kind of having a multiplayer experience. 
that let players team up and try to take down something that was like just way greater than anything else. And it's been a lot of fun. And I can't wait to get to do a bunch of raids with people at conventions and stuff. Mm -hmm. Because they're just super fun. And I am not the Thanos player guy. Like I don't I don't typically love playing the big bad boss. I I'd much rather be on the hero side or the quote unquote hero side, I guess. I gotta be fair. Who am I to judge who's the hero and who's not? When I play Thanos, I am the hero of my own story. You know who's like truly shocking to me was when we started playtesting the raids with Josh. Josh is like the nicest, soft spoken guy you'll ever meet. It's always apologetic and like just super, oh yes, what a, like he got control of like ultimate power and it was it was over. No. He was he was like screaming at us and cackling about how we were just weak and feeble. Th that, and, that recent one. Yeah, it was it was out of control. I just I, I didn't even know what to do. I had to leave. I was like, you're just you've you've become drunk, drunk with power. I blame you and Pagani for making that particular scenario so much fun to play <laughs> as the bad guy. Like, I can't say too much, but like, man, blowing stuff up, oh, it's just, it's just unbelievable. I can't wait for people to get their hands Just civilians one. everywhere. Just, mm, that's so good. I mean, I feel like it had nothing to do with the scenario. I think it just unlocked something that you would try to repress deep down inside of you. And like, Josh is one scientific accident away from becoming like a supervillain. That's really what it is. That's yeah, everyone has that innate choice inside of them where it's like, oh, I just got like doused in radioactive chemicals, and now I have a superpower. What should I do with them? Josh knows what he does. Did it? Did it turn me into somebody who has an innate sense of responsibility and a need to help people, or did it turn me into an absolute monster? <laughs> we know where Josh would go because I saw it happen. I was like, Josh, you have this power, and he was like, I have this power. Bow before me, foolish mortals. Tremble beneath my feet. It was great. I mean, we had people coming in from, like, other places in the office asking what was going on. He was so loud. So, it was, it was all that's to say, I'm very excited for everyone else in the world to get their chance to uh, discover, you know, their true identity. Are you, are you a savior or are you a destroyer? Who knows? You'll get to find out soon. And you might learn something about your friends that you never knew because I would have never guessed it. Never would have guessed it. Well, a little bit of both. That's what I say. A little bit of both. Look, man, you, you, yeah, if you want to go back and forth, I'm all down with that. I don't think Josh ever will, though. I think, I think Josh is only interested in one thing now. Total world domination. I find out something about myself through Marvel Prize's protocol. Every day. That's, that's what we do. We, we, unlock, we unlock truths. We unlock truths. All right, well, this is, here we go. Here's, here's our... A Kree Star Force going on. That's looking on. pretty good. You want to see what I'm doing? Yeah, let's see what you what do you got. Oh, you've added little swippy lines. So I did, I think everybody caught it. I put a little yellow glaze up in the top. And now I just took some light blue and I lined the top parts of the glass. And I'm going to take, and I did some little swoop lines, little reflections. And I took a lighter, almost white. And I'm going to enhance those a bit. So you can see I'm just going to take. Enhance. Enhance. Just kind of. Doesn't have to be perfectly on top. They can lay side by side a little bit. Just give me that little reflection. Someone in chat says Dallas makes painting windows look easy. Um, well, that's why I'm doing it, is to show you that a little, little, little practice. Just having fun and just, you know, th this won't win an award. So it's, it's just about having fun. And it's for me. This is like we've talked before, and it's it's kind of just our philosophy is like this, you, you kind of establish what a miniature is for. Like when you when you pick it up and you go to paint it. Like is this miniature for gaming? Is this miniature for display? Is this miniature for um, competition? Is this miniature a gift? Is this miniature... Um, um, maybe it's for a job. Maybe it's for um, the box, right? So you decide what it is, and then you and then you paint it appropriately. This miniature is for me. This is mine. So the only thing that this has to do is make me happy, and just by painting it, it makes me happy. So it's already fulfilled its destiny. And 
Um, I like the way it looks, so therefore it's achieved its destiny, and that's all that matters to me. Is that I'm having fun, and I like it, and it's not perfect, but that's okay. That's okay. It doesn't need to be. This is cool looking. It's a car to be tossed by Kree Star Force. Captain Ca Marvel. Captain Marvel over there. She needs so. cars to throw. She gets very unhappy when there are no cars to throw. There's nothing worse than walking onto an empty b parking lot. I know. Being to, like, to where are the battle. cars? I told you to plan ahead. We needed cars. We always fight at the, the car rental place. <laughs> There's always got to be a parking lot nearby. You know, it's just, This is how the world works. This is how it is. It's okay. It's okay. I mean, look, we live in Seattle. There's plenty of cars to buy to throw. That's true. But we're not able to throw the cars. Which is we're not. Kind of the sad part here. Dallas with another question. Um, would you use gloss varnish after the windows are done? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, <laughs> that's a really good question. That's that's uh, that's preference. Um, me, I won't. Um, I actually, actually personally don't don't care for the gloss on on my stuff. Um, I think if that's the way you want to go and you like it, then then you knock it out. Uh, me personally, I'm just not a big uh, gloss person. I prefer that's why I'm painting all these little these little reflections. I've actually moved up to a almost pure white, but not quite pure white, and I'm putting in even smaller uh, lines and dots and stuff like that. I I, I pro short answer no. <laughs> <laughs> you tried though. You really tried. You're like you know it's it's a thing. I mean, if you want to do it, that's great. I, I, I don't, you know, I'm not like, I'm not sitting there like, oh, I can't believe that guy put gloss varnish on his windshield. Um, I just, I, I, I like the look of, I like the look of it without. I'm going to put a little reflection down there. Maybe a little what am I going to right? shade the steel with? Ace McLaren says, also Dallas, awesome job on the windows. Man, I can never get them to look the, the, the way I wanted to, so I'm going to have to watch this again, probably. Yeah, watch this again. Just follow along. It's it's um, it's it's a white undercoat, um, and you can use an airbrush. You can, you could even use a rattle can. You can just use a brush, whatever you want. Just just paint white. Um, it's a it's a blue wash that I just kind of controlled with a second brush to keep more white showing on the top than on the bottom. Then a dark gray wash, and then a little yellow, and then a couple highlights. Like these are all techniques that anybody can do, and with a little practice, you'll perfect it. I'm, I'm really happy with this, actually. I, I think, think it looks great. I think yeah. it turned out way better than looks, I was It looks expecting. real good. Look, sometimes you just gotta dive in. Like I, you know, two weeks in a row now, I've kind of come in and just been like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna paint from the brain. And you know, it, it turns that's out. A, yeah, turns that's what this is. This is like paint from the brain. Like, I've never tried to paint a windshield in the light uh, colors. I always did dark, um, but I enjoyed the process, and I think it looks pretty cool. And then I'm gonna let this cure and put some sort of putty on there and make a taxi. This is because I just realized this was my taxi. That is your taxi. It is. It is. This totes your taxi. Not my little silver car. I paint a little silver car. I don't know why I painted silver. I should probably. Cause did you paint it silver? Cause you the other one that you painted for the box was silver. I, I think I. Do you just feel like really all cars are silver? Phoned it in. I think silver is like the number one most common color of cars. I think so. it is. My friend, I, I uh, so a friend of mine, uh, when we were at Gen Con and we were, when we showed off Marvel cars, spoke off. A friend of mine came up and was like, I was just like, oh my god, look at that car in there. That's amazing. And then leaned over. And it, uh, this is a guy that I've known for twenty some years. Um, and he leaned over and goes, are you going to paint it like the old purple car you used to have? And I was like, <laughs> oh my gosh, that's brilliant. Because my, my first new car. Was purple? Was, it, dude, it was periwinkle. Nice. It was like just a periwinkle uh, little sedan type car. And I, okay, so I got a silver car. So I think I can just glaze it with some periwinkle. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get some periwinkle. Just glaze some it in there. Metallic periwinkle. That metallic periwinkle. I mean, you know, some automotive periwinkle. Why not? Uh, I'm just gonna look for the color over here. Oh yeah, you just tone this down. 
There you go. Yeah, violet, violet ink. Yeah, you just Done. turn on this violet ink. Go over the silver. Boom. Metallic periwinkles. Well, that's, you know, that's something. That's a thing. The 10 minute mark. It is. But I mean, as far as like what Dallas was talking about, you know, hopefully the folks, as you guys watch this, you can see that, I mean, it took, I don't know, when we started painting, it wasn't that long ago, but basically from Primer to Captain Marvel, mostly done at this point, less than an hour. So there are definitely ways to get really nice results really quick. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, just to kind of know what you're looking for for your miniature and go in there and don't be afraid to do it. And then just, like Dal said, love the journey and you'll appreciate the results because that's, that's the best part. The best part is getting there, not, not having the miniature done, although that's fun too because then you can play with it and stuff. But it's like I just got to spend an hour like zoning out, trying new things. Making a minty green Captain Marvel. Yeah, I mean the reward is finishing, but the, the the process itself is like taking joy, like it's 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 learning to take joy in process, right? Not not worrying about the 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 end result, and you're you know you're you're always rushing to get that reward, right? That's what you're that's what you crave. But if you take a step back and just kind of enjoy the process and don't overthink it, you'll find yourself truly just just reveling in that process and then you get double reward it's 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 you get double reward you get the reward of finishing and the reward of the process you just tricked nature did you did you did you punk nature is I that punk nature you just punked nature more than nature you just got punked i'm like i can i can enjoy looking for the the raspberry not just eating the raspberry is looking for raspberries a hobby i don't know no i'm talking about like ancient ancient ancient, ancient man, brain physics ancient brain ph physics ancient. this is probably not the right stream for that for ancient brain physics <laughs> probably not nor do we have the appropriate like degrees for such a discussion but, oh not at all but you know that, boy, that won't stop me boys can dream that's the best part when has it ever it shouldn't. You got to do something while you're. I like my little car windshield. I think I want to put a little bit of green in there. I picked one out. I don't remember where it went. I picked the green out. Does anybody remember what color I said at the beginning of the show? <laughs> I think. She Rewind. It up. Rewind. Was it the green wash? Did I? I think it was the green wash. I don't think I picked it up. I think it was. The green Maybe wash. I picked it up. I don't know. You can blame me though. That's fine. Everybody does. I think just putting a little bit of green. In the shadows, I think to kind of represent, or maybe in the middle, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I want. That's great. Do we have any? We have any last questions there, Josh? Anything people desperately want to know? This is your final chance, Oof, ever. Harsh. No, that's not true. We'll be back next week. We're just getting a lot of compliments on our sculpts. People like the vision. People want us to like Thanos. That vision, I cannot wait to paint the vision. Although I'm really excited to paint the Wakandans, man. I, I want to get me a Black Panther so bad. That vision was... That, that, was, that was a fun experiment to, to, to try out. I really enjoyed him and how he, how he came about. It worked out really good. It was... It was really fun. It's been a fun, I mean, it's just been a, a blast of an experience and I can't wait for, can't wait for folks to see what else we've got behind the curtain, you know? Thanos wasn't, wasn't the end. Uh, he might want to be, but he wasn't. He was not even close to the end. I mean, Josh, how'd you feel last night about 3.45? Oh, there you go. Do you remember last night at 3.45, Josh? He should. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I do. I feel, and then I can't wait. I, I can't wait. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was a rude teaser. I guess I, I, I apologize, Dream. <laughs> now someday we can go back to the tape and be like, "Remember that really cryptic thing about 
<laughs> this is what it was about. Oh dun, my god. Dun, dun. Ermagar. Okay. That's what people can say. Now I'm getting a little arty and I'm painting trees into the reflections of the glass. I was going to say, are you going to do like a skyline? Like skyscrapers and the reflection? Does anybody want to see how I do this? How I'm doing this? Probably. Isn't okay. that what they're here for? No, they were here for Thanos. Right. That's right. They're here for Thanos. They've already left. They're like, ah, oh, you showed it. All right. Watch this, Josh. Watch how I do this. So I'm going to take my brush. I got a little bit of green. I'm just going to kind of do like a little broccoli shape on this bottom edge. I'm just going to grab it with that second brush. And I'm just going to remove it and pull it down. And you kind of leave like a little ring. See how that worked, Josh? Mm -hmm. Maybe over here. I don't know. I, no, I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing at like how he's like, mm. see what I did there, Josh? And you're just like, yeah, whatever, man. And you're kind of getting these little green... Uh, tree like, you know, I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm just having fun. This is ridiculous. And this is like that point where you're painting five o'clock shadows on okay. not, not your captain. I right. love painting five o'clock shadow on measures, and we will show how to do that. It is not hard. That's definitely a winter soldier style thing. It is right not there. hard. It is way not hard. That man is perfe perpetually like gruff and winter. He is grizzled. He is. He really is. Loves being grizzled. All right, well. I think the only thing left to do is maybe put that Thanos back up on the screen and. Let him wave goodbye. We let him wave goodbye? Mm -hmm. Is that what we're doing? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Goodbye, everyone. That's not how. That's not. That's not that good. was like Thanos is done from the street, man. Oh, I keep turning the light off. So all right, guys. In all of his glory. All of his glory. Well, thank you so much for joining us for this hobby and hang. Be sure to check back next week, 1 p.m. Pacific time, as we do more painting, hobbying, and potentially playing. Uh, watch our social medias for all of the latest information, including exclusive reveals and uh, all the information leading up to release, which happens November 15th, when you guys can grab a hold of your own miniatures, start painting with us on these Thursdays. If you guys do have any questions about how we've painted anything or would like to see things on the stream, be sure to hit us up on social media. We're always happy to engage in any kind of discourse on hobbying. Um, it's what we love to do. So be sure to check us out. And finally, you can always check out the Atomic Mass Games website for all the good information all the time. Thank you so much for joining us, guys. We will see you all next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you later.